Remember last week's episode? That was a lot, wasn't it? Well, we were always going to come back to this game, even if it was a lot to deal with, and we're back again. This place is still trash and still a mess and everyone is still grieving, but we are going to have to move forward. After all, we still have artifacts to find and a mystery to solve, and Sam's death doesn't really change that. The rest of the city seems to be back to normal as we head off to meet a, a preacher of some religion. They seem to have the same beliefs, or at the very least the same sayings as the hunter that Someone killed Sam, so it's as good a place to start as any. When we bring our suspicions up, he suddenly wants to talk privately. He must know more. Talking to him, though, maybe not. He doesn't give us a lot of information. What he gives us is more prophecy than anything else, but it does give us some places to start. Sarah is very thankful to us, and at this point, I feel like my relationship with her is kind of unintentionally locked in. Ah, oh, well, I sacrificed Sam to keep her alive. I guess I should stick with her now. <laughs> anyway, back to the talk at hand. We go and have a chat with someone who runs the charity, who is very rude and won't even look at us. We get some more information, though. The rest of our information comes from what seems like a mad woman, a violent religious zealot who's been locked up for, well, being a violent religious zealot. Not exactly our kind of person. I'm not really sure what it all means, but we'll go back to our preacher friend and see if he can help us put it all together after we quickly drop some stuff off on our ship. Together, we work it out. We have a solution. We have coordinates. We may as well head off now. I quickly pop back into the lodge and there will be a memorial for Sam, but not for a few days and not for this episode. We've got some time until then. For now, we head off and to the coordinates. It brought us to Pilgrim's Rest, which I thought would be like a tomb for the Traveller, but as we get closer, it actually seems to be their home. The man's paranoid as hell, though, trying to unlock his door, and he's got this riddle that requires reading all of his books and knowing his philosophy. Well, there are only five, and we only need to extract a few capitalized words from each of them, so we get it done quickly, head through the door. It doesn't give us any answers, but it does give us another world to search, so we'll go over there. We have to make several jumps to get there, and on one of them we run into the Crimson Fleet, and they attack us. How dare. It's not exactly like pirates to have much of a chance against us. I was going to let this one live right up until the moment it launches a barrage of missiles at me. Anyway, with them out of the way, we head to Hyla, which actually looks like a nice planet, landing on it. It looks like somewhere you could build a tropical resort on. I'm surprised some holiday company hasn't snapped it up and turned it into a retreat. I was somewhat concerned about the massive native life form because they sure as hell look dangerous, but they let us get close and scan us without, or scan them even, without any problem. Same with the rest of them. I'm surprised by their placidness, but I'm definitely not complaining. Now we get to the puzzle, it takes me a while to work this out until I see the pattern on the floor. We can line the beam up with the star, and the book says Scorpion's Tail, so we go for the tail, it gives us a star map. So far, very good. At least until we get into orbit and then get attacked. I was going to fight them, and I did start fighting them, but these are starborn. They ripped through our ship while I did barely any damage to them. We need to get the hell out of there. That's exactly what I did, just in the nick of time too. Of course, we, we did then manage to jump straight up to the hunter's ship. Great. This time, though, he only wanted to talk, thankfully. They both want to talk, so we head over there. The ship is impressive. And now we get to learn the truth. The Starborn are not aliens. The Starborns are humans from parallel universes. It's a little weird talking to Sam. Another Sam, but still, it's, it's the guy we sacrificed and the guy the hunter killed. Strange. They basically want me to join them. Well, one of them. It does feel like there's an obvious good guy and an obvious bad guy, and that, yeah, it's very obvious. I mean, especially because the hunter is the one that killed our Sam. We have a bit of a chat with them, learn some more from both of them. I'm leaning more towards the emissary than I am towards the hunter. Even the names say who the good guy and who the bad guy is, but it's a future decision. I've got another artifact to find, and we're being sent to the moon. We go and have a quick chat with the Lodge first, but the consensus is just proceed cautiously, so we head to the moon. 
We have visited here once briefly, just because I was curious, but this time we're heading to a proper moon base. That base gives us a little hint of what's going on, but the one thing that's clear is that what we need isn't here. We need to head back to where, unsurprisingly, all of humanity's space adventures started. We need to head back to Earth. Specifically, we're going to Florida, which <laughs> sounds like a weird place to go, but it is where NASA's based. I've actually been to Florida many years ago, and I'll admit it didn't look quite like this. Anyway, we'll go and see what's in this facility. We learn quickly that although there's not much power left here, we can find and use the emergency power cell to get doors open. That'd be handy. I ended up climbing up to an upper platform and then going on something of a parkour adventure that I very much doubt the original designer had in mind before we get to an elevator. No power, of course, but we solve that quickly and head down and inside. When we walk into the main area, I think this is meant to be the Kennedy Space Center? If so, I have actually been here. Anyway, whacking nostalgia is not what we're here for. We're tracing the research to an artifact, and so far we don't have a lot. Sarah gets cold feet part way, but we continue progressing anyway with her. She comes around. It's a lot of climbing, parkouring, working my way around, and powering up doors. So I seem to accidentally trigger an old security system. Whoops. Fortunately for us, it is nothing we can't handle. The progress continues, and we find more logs, and as we do that, well, it takes a while to find anything, I mean, for a long time, there's a lot of hints. Eventually, though, we find out where we have to go, and we find one of the corpses of the scientist in the logs. And now we find out the truth. That the grav drives were built using the artifacts. And that testing those grav drives is what destroyed the Earth. Somehow I'm not surprised at all that humanity destroyed Earth. I did suspect it from the start. We're good at wrecking this planet as it is. We have what we came here for, both the artifact and the lesson. But getting out will be a challenge. Other starborns have appeared. These ones are not friendly. The good news is, I've discovered the shotgun to their head is very effective. <laughs> so getting out isn't too difficult. But now we have a choice. And it's a choice I'll make next time. Emissary or Hunter? Cyber the restrictive good guy or the bad guy slash murderer who will give us freedom. It's not actually an easy decision, but we'll make it next time. For now though, I quite enjoyed this episode. We learnt some new major lore things, we got a new achievement, we visited some really cool places. If the game keeps going like this, I can't wait until next time.